After making a reference to Mother Shipton in Part 7 of The Mechanics of Ascension, I had quite a few people ask me for more details. Therefore, I have put together this short presentation based on the original Nexus magazine article that I first came across in 1995. After rereading the prophecies, I realised how pertinent they were to our time in history right now. What follows is an exact transcript from the Nexus magazine that first published the Mother Shipton prophecies. That in itself was a prediction that she made, that the prophecies would not come to light until the age of printing. Here is the introduction. This rare collection of Mother Shipton's prophecies was sent to us by a Nexus reader who told us that, 30 years ago, she painstakingly transcribed them, and managed to smuggle them out of the Mitchell Library, Sydney, now the State Library of New South Wales. The originals were kept in a locked room, along with many other volumes of prophetic writings deemed unsuitable for viewing by the general public. To our knowledge, this particular translation has never been made available to the public, before appearing in Nexus magazine. While Nexus published these transcriptions in an earlier issue, Volume 2, Number 3, we thought them worthy of repeating for the benefit of our new readers, particularly in light of world events. Mother Shipton was born Ursula Somfield in 1488, in Norfolk, England, and died in 1561. She exhibited prophetic and psychic abilities from an early age. At 24, she married to Toby Shipton and eventually became known as Mother Shipton. Many of her visions came true within her own lifetime, and in subsequent centuries. These rare verses seem to have prophetic indications for our times, but are of course, open to interpretation. And now, the prophecies of Mother Shipton. And now a word, in uncouth rhyme, of what will be in future time, then upside down the world shall be, and gold found at the root of tree, all England's sons that plough the land, shall oft be seen with book in hand, the poor shall now great wisdom know, great houses stand in far-flung vale, all covered over with snow and hail, a carriage without horse will go, disaster fill the world with woe, in London, Primrose Hill shall be, in centre hold a bishop's see, around the world men's thoughts will fly, quick as the twinkling of an eye, and water shall great wonders do, how strange, and yet it shall come true, through towering hills proud men shall ride, no horse or ass move by his side, beneath the water, men shall walk, shall ride, shall sleep, shall even talk, and in the air men shall be seen, in white and black and even green, a great man, shall come and go for prophecy declares it so, in water, iron then shall float as easy as a wooden boat, gold shall be seen in stream and stone, in land that is yet unknown, and England shall admit a Jew, do you think this strange, but it is true, the Jew that once was led in scorn, shall of a Christian then be born, a house of glass shall come to pass, in England, but alas, alas, a war will follow with the work, where dwells the pagan and the Turk, these states will lock in fiercest strife, and seek to take each other's life. When north shall thus divide the south, an eager build in lion's mouth, then tax and blood and cruel war, shall come to every humble door. Three times shall lovely sunny France, be led to play a bloody dance, before the people shall be free, three tyrant rulers shall she see, three rulers in succession be, each springs from different dynasty, then when the fiercest strife is done, England and France shall be as one, the British olive shall next then twine, in marriage with a German vine, men walk beneath and over streams, fulfilled shall be their wondrous dreams, for in those wondrous far off days, the women shall adopt a craze, to dress like men, and trousers wear, and to cut off their locks of hair, they'll ride astride with brazen brow, as witches do on broomsticks now, and roaring monsters with men atop, does seem to eat the verdant crop, and men shall fly as birds do now, and give away the horse and plough, there will be a sign for all to see, be sure that it will certain be, then love shall die and marriage cease, and nations wane as babes decrease, and wives shall fondle cats and dogs, and men live much the same as hogs. The following verses were found on the outer wrappings of the scrolls. I know I go, I know I'm free, I know that this will come to be, secreted this, for this will be, found by later dynasty, 
a dairy maid, a bonnie lass, shall kick this tom as she does pass, and five generations she shall breed, before one male child does learn to read. This is then held year by year, till an iron monster trembling fear, eats parchment, words and quill and ink, and mankind is given time to think, and only when this comes to be, will mankind read this prophecy, but one man sweets another's bane, so I shall not have burned in vain. These verses were found on a scroll in another jar. The signs will be there for all to read. When man shall do most heinous deed, man will ruin kinder lives. By taking them as to their wives, and murder fell and brutal deed, when man will only think of greed, and man shall walk as if asleep. He does not look, he may not peep, an iron man the tale shall do. An iron cart and carriage too, the king shall false promise make and talk just for talking's sake, a nation's plan horrific war. The like has never seen before, and taxes rise and lively down. A nation's where perpetual frown, yet greater sign there be to see. As man nears latter century, three sleeping mountains gather breath, and spew out mud, ice and death, and earthquakes swallow town and town, in lands as yet to me unknown, and Christian one fights Christian two, a nation's sigh, yet nothing do, and yellow men great power gain. The mighty bear with whom they've lain, these mighty tyrants will fail to do, they fail to split the world in two, but from their acts a danger bred. An ague, leaving many dead, and physics find no remedy. For this is worse than leprosy, oh many signs for all to see. The truth of this true prophecy. The last prophecy of Mother Shipton. In 1926, Build houses light of straw and sticks, for then shall mighty wars be planned, and fire and swords shall sweep the land, when pictures seem alive with movements free, when boats like fishes swim beneath the sea, when men like birds shall scour the sky, then half the world, deep drenched in blood shall die, but those who live the century through, in fear and trembling this shall do, flee to the mountains and the dens, to bog and forest and wild fens. The storms will rage and oceans roar, when Gabriel stands on sea and shore, and as he blows his wondrous horn, old worlds die and new be born, a fiery dragon will cross the sky, six times before the earth shall die, mankind will tremble and frightened be, for the six heralds in this prophecy, for seven days and seven nights, man will watch this awesome sight, the tides will rise beyond their ken, to bite away the shores and then, the mountains will begin to roar, and earthquakes split the plain to shore, and flooding waters rushing in, will flood the lands with such a din, that mankind cowers in muddy fen, and snarls about his fellow men, he bears his teeth and fights and kills, and secrets food in secret ill, and ugly in his fear, he lies, to kill marauders, thieves and spies, man flees in terror from the floods, and kills, and rapes and lies in blood, and spilling blood by mankind's hand, will stain and bitter many lands, and when the dragon's tail is gone, man forgets and smiles and carries on, to apply himself, too late too late, for mankind has earned deserved fate, his masked smile, his false grandeur, will serve the gods their anger stir, and they will send the dragon back, to light the sky, his tail will crack, upon the earth and rend the earth, and man shall flee, king, lord and serf, but slowly they are rooted out, to seek diminishing water spout, and men will die of thirst before, the oceans rise to mount to the shore, and lands will crack and rend anew, do you think it strange, it will come true, and in some far, off distant land, some men, oh such a tiny band, will have to leave their solid mount, and span the earth, those few to count, who survives this? This word is unreadable. And then, begin the human race again, but not on land already there, but on ocean beds, stark, dry and bare, not every soul on earth will die, as the dragon's tail goes sweeping by, not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink, of rotting bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on land, but the land that rises from the sea, will be dry and clean and soft and free, of mankind's dirt and therefore be, the source of man's new dynasty, and those that live will ever fear, the dragon's tail for many year, that time erases memory, you think it strange, but it will be.
and before the race is built anew, a silver serpent comes to view, and spew out men of like unknown, to mingle with the earth now grown, cold from its heat and these men can, enlighten the minds of future man, to intermingle and show them how, to live and love and thus endow, the children with the second sight, a natural thing so that they might, grow graceful, humble and when they do, the golden age will start anew, the dragon's tail is but a sign, for mankind's fall and man's decline, and before this prophecy is done, I shall be burned at the stake, at one, my body cinched and my soul set free, you think I utter blasphemy, you're wrong, these things have come to me, this prophecy will come to be.